so very good afternoon everyone so i'll be talking about uh, enigma of a case which is a 22 year old male which presented to us for a second opinion can you So just to give you a context, she presented with a gradually progressive painless blurring of vision from the past two months, which was associated with lotus. So he came for a second opinion after he was advised uh, the vitreous biopsy and he was advised intravitreal antifungal with antibiotics. And there were all sort of diagnoses on the previous lips. Uh, it was a tuberculoma in some or choroidal abscess and he underwent these battery of tests. So on examination. The visual acuity in the right eye was 624 N36, and the left eye it was 66 N6. The pressures were normal, and the anterior segment was unremarkable in the both eyes. So on posterior segment, you see there is a tortuosity and dilatation of the vessels in both superior and inferior quadrant. You see this some yellow uh, subretinal deposits, and you then see some floating white vitreous spheres. So on wide field imaging, you so you, you can see there is a large mass in the periphery which has a subretinal component, which has an epiretinal fluffy component, and there are multiple floating vitreous spheres. So on B scan, you can see there is a corresponding hyperreflective mass, which has, you can see both the epiretinal and the subretinal component, and the vitreous component as well, and there's a little subretinal fluid. So at this point, our diagnosis was whether it's an adult onset retinoblastoma or an amelanotic melanoma. So points in favor of an aim of the Retinoblastoma was that there were multiple subretinal and vitreous seeds, and it has a moderate to high internal reflectivity. So we diagnosed it as a group D retinoblastoma, and we went ahead and do an OCT scan, which showed us the same, the, the subretinal as well as the epiretinal spheres, with the minimal subretinal fluid in the macula. The anterior segment was normal on the ES OCT, and on MRI you can see there is a region which is hyperintense on T1 and hypo on T2. The optic nerve was normal, and there was no int uh, intracranial extension, and there was a minimal contrast uptake. So at this point, uh, we offered the treatment pl uh, plan to the patient, and we went ahead and do did enucleation in this patient because this patient was from from a far off place, and he did not want to come back for the multiple sessions of chemotherapy. So we, we were not really sure what to do in this case. So he, we went ahead and did an enucleation. On e uh, after enucleation, you can see on histopathology, it was confirmed it's a round blue cell tumor, and IHC was positive for synaptophysin and chromogranin in A, and there was a high KIA 67 index. There were no high risk features. So what makes this case a challenging is, the number one, the pathogenesis. So there are two possible explanations for retinoblastoma in an adult patient is, whether there was persistence of uh, some embryonal retinal cells, or it was a spontaneously regressed or a rested retinoblastoma which was reactivated. So this is another patient of a retinocytoma or a spontaneously regressed retinoblastoma wherein you have this, this area of calcification as well as some atrophic retina. So we did not see this in our patient and there was no family history as well. So we diagnosed it as a de novo retinoblastoma from persistence of embryonal retinal cells. So another challenge was the misdiagnosis. There are 35 odd cases which have been reported earlier and there are all sorts of misdiagnosis. <coughs> Another thing is the classification, the ICRB, which has been proposed for the uh, uh, retinoblastoma classification, it is only for the children, uh, for the children, not for the adults. So whether these treatment options and classification is valid on the adults, we are not really sure. And th there has been one large series by Dr. Swathi Kalki in which only there was one globe salvage in isolated 30 cases which they presented in a study. So there are a lot of unanswered questions regarding the genetic makeup, the globe salvage, and the long-term survival of these children, uh, of these adults. So we don't really know uh, uh, what to call this case, a retinocytoma or a retinoblastoma. So this really makes our case a challenging and a rare scenario. Thank you. I have described uh, two cases of adult onset, three cases of adult onset retinoblastoma in survey of ophthalmology with review of literature. Mm, and, and the oldest of that was 32 years old. <laughs> it's really a diagnostic challenge when you see a retinoblastoma in adults. Whether they start from a retinocytoma and then missed and then uh, at an adult age they develop retinoblastoma is not really known. Mm. But this is a unique um, manifestation of retinoblastoma. But there are around 30 to 40 cases has been reported in the 
literature. Yeah. Three cases by my. Even sir, that one of our patient who ultimately went to you, that yeah, lady, yeah, yeah. we are following her for almost last 15 years. We had done a enucleation, like we were in a diagnostic dilemma, it was sent to sir. Then ultimately, sir, you all had done a vitreous biopsy. Yeah, we vitreous did a final last mm. biopsy. FNEC was done, then ultimately she was enucleated, that I was enucleated, yeah. and uh, no uh, radio, uh, no chemo was given because it was not a high risk retinoblastoma, it was just, uh, what is, I think retinocytoma, that was what you all feel, no? Retinocytoma converting into a malignancy. And she is with me for the follow for almost 15 years. And she is fine, otherwise she is doing very good. But I feel that I have seen two cases only till now and both are females. So is it that it is more common amongst the females or, uh, sir, what is your thought? Yeah, I have got a one male patient also. The female is, um, can, I don't think there's a gender variations, but um, the thing is the how it has been, I don't think that it's from the ch childhood retinoblastoma growing in adult. I think it's a kind of a, some retinoblast cells is there which uh, grows into that uh, in adult stage or from a retinocytoma, it, which is missed and which is a, uh, no, asymptomatic and later on developed retinoblastoma. So, uh, if they come with the vitreous said uh, at this age, this current scenario, I won't really enucleate. I will try the chemotherapy. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, we have also reported one case of uh, adult onset uh, retinoblastoma. In that case, uh, we have done blunder. Basically, patient has given history of trauma and uh, we thought patient has panophthalmitis, so we have gone for uh, evisceration. But during evisceration, it was found that there's a mass-like feature. So we have sent for histopathology, and it comes out to be uh, retinoblastoma. It, uh, it has been published in, uh, patient was around 27-year-old male. Uh, it was published in orbit. Have you done a vitreous uh, biopsy or? No, 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 before that, I'm asking we, didn't we didn't do a vitreous biopsy initially. But you saw vitreous uh, seeds, you yeah. could have done a so aspiration we batch. Because we were thinking of retinoblastoma, we are not really sure whether it will lead on to, you know, extraocular spread or not. So if we are thinking on the lines of retinoblastoma, you can go ahead with that ice ball technique, the same technique we used to inject in retinoblastoma kids. But we are not really sure at that time. So the patient already, you know, he wanted enucleation. So we went ahead and did enucleation in this case. Excellent uh, case presentation. Thank Retinoblastoma is something very dear to my heart. Yeah, so uh, two things here, like mm. uh, whenever there is a vitreous seed, adult onset retinoblastoma is very, very rare, all right? Uh, whenever you find a whitish lesion and there is vitreous seeds, it's almost always retinoblastoma. So melanoma doesn't present with white seeds. Another thing that in adults that we should keep in mind yeah. is lymphoma or even leukemia. But uh, lymphoma, again, you don't get this large lesion and you had, uh, you know, hyperreflectivity in the ultrasound. Yeah. So I don't think there is a diagnostic lymphoma dilemma here, you know, clinically. Medicine. Now, when you talk about medulloepithelioma, which is yet another differential diagnosis, we call it a ciliary body medulloepithelioma, right. right? So most of these lesions are in the periphery. And when seed happens in ciliary body medulloepithelioma, it's usually in the anterior segment their presence with sago grain seeds in the AC, anterior chamber, not really in the yeah. vitreous. So vitreous seeds is mostly retinoblastoma, if not lymphoma or very rarely uh, leukemia. So that is how. Now regarding the classification that you actually used a sentence that the classification of retinoblastoma is for the children, yeah. which is wrong. Okay, retinoblastoma, although it is very, very common in children, uh, it can happen in adults, uh, which is the uh, oldest patient in the case report if you have done a review of literature. So I think it was a 55-year-old. Yeah, so 62-year-old by Shields uh, from Wills Eye Hospital. So it, the classification remains the same. Okay. Now that we have the TNMH classification also as any other cancers in the body, for retinoblastoma, so classification doesn't change for a child or an adult, all right, yeah. And as Dr. Biswas uh, clearly mentioned, we have so much of advancement in, you know, treatment of retinoblastoma. It was in fact a very small lesion with vitreous seeds. Uh, we should be able to counsel the patient 
you know, for chemotherapy and vitreces, and treatment remains the same uh, universally, worldwide, you know, uh, for an adult or a child. Depending upon the body weight and age, the dosage changes, but the treatment doesn't change. Thank you. So yeah. For that statement, uh, whether this uh, ICRB classification, you know, needs the prognostic classification is same for the adults as well, that will, you know, that's the point. The okay. prognosis, whether it remains the same in adults as Well, so every tumor behaves in a different way. Even in a child, I think not every tumor, you know, behaves the same way. I think sure. for the final established diagnosis, either you should have done a vitreous biopsy uh, for histopathology or you should have gone for genetic analysis to establish that, yes, this is retroplastoma only. Clinically, it is appearing. I agree. Uh, so, vitreous biopsy probably not because clinically it was a clear shot case of a tumor with hyperreflectivity no, and vitreous seed. How are we sure? Even the lymphoma can have vitreous haze, it's true, but lymphoma can also have a vitreous, it, it will present a white lesion with some of vitreous cells. But I still believe that without a biopsy, so should we start any treatment? I'm see? not in favor of giving treatment without biopsy. So in this no. case, uh, probably there was hyperreflectivity in the ultrasound. That means there is some calcification there. And it's a tumor which is like very typical of a white lesion with vitreous seeds and subretinal seeds also, which they, you know, in OCT it was proven. So I personally wouldn't go for a biopsy. I mean, it's just my personal practice, yeah. So we discussed all the options. I know retinoblastoma. <laughs> So we discussed all the options with the patient and he, we finally he agreed for enucleation. So we went ahead with the enucleation. You have gone for enucleation. Yeah. Enucleation then huh. for that, uh, then definitely you should have gone for histopathology of the enucleation. So we did histopathology, sir. Huh, then it came, came, done, it came as retinoblastoma. I think the globe could have been salvaged in case uh, you had done a very aggressive treatment because now to 95% salvage rate, they say, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. The patient did not agree for follow-up. He did not want the side effects of chemotherapy, so he he wanted. Anyways, uh, all the discussion, mm -hmm. all the uh, yeah. right. But what I still believe, but um, Bishwas sir has mentioned, we ha should have a confirmatory diagnosis in nature. any cancer, because cancer is not an eye treatment; it's a treatment of the life. So we need to have a confirmatory diagnosis when we. That is what we practice, but there's always individual variations.